Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Friday the 13th, The Game. This video is going to be a bit different than your normal video here on Nero's Let's Plays, because today we are going to just sit down and discuss the entire situation involving Friday the 13th, The Game, and what may or may not be happening to it in the very near future. So if you guys haven't heard, there is currently a huge lawsuit going on over the rights to the Friday the 13th franchise. On one side, we have Victor Miller, who is the screenwriter for the original film, and he is claiming via the Copyright Act that the Friday the 13th franchise is his intellectual property. On the flip side of things, we have Sean Cunningham, who was the director of the original film, and he claims that when Victor Miller wrote the script, he did so as a work for hire, and therefore the franchise is the intellectual property of his employer. So to put that into gaming context, imagine hypothetically for a moment that I was hired by Bethesda to work on Fallout 76. That would mean that every Every character I designed, every story that I wrote, and every monster I created, that would all be the property of Bethesda because they hired me to make things for the game under US copyright law. Well, Sean is saying the same thing happened with the original Friday the 13th movie. He's claiming that as the director, he came up with the idea for a Halloween movie and he hired a bunch of writers, including Victor Miller, to help him develop the idea. It was his intellectual property, he just hired some writers to help him develop the idea, which would fall normally under US copyright law, but Victor is claiming that when he wrote the screenplay for the movie, he was not under contract. He claims he wrote it during his free time, and a big reason why this lawsuit was even started is because of how little money Victor was given for his role with Friday the 13th. Victor Miller was given $9,500 for his Friday the 13th screenplay, and as you guys know, the series went on to have 12 movies, countless spin-offs, tons of merchandise, an awesome video game which you guys are watching right now, and a whole lot else. The franchise made hundreds of millions of dollars over the years, and Victor Miller hasn't been entitled to any of it whatsoever, despite him being the screenwriter for the original film. I do think he's worth more than $9,500, but I'm not sure he has the rights to the entire franchise, and that's where things kind of get muddy here, right? In the United States Copyright Act, there is a provision in there that allows authors to terminate any transfer they made of their rights after 35 or more years. The reason why Congress added this was so that creators who sold their rights very cheaply in the past could have a second chance if their intellectual property blew up into something huge. Well, Victor Miller claims that because he wrote the screenplay for the original film and developed the idea of the drowning boy Jason, he believes that all the sequels, all the merchandise, all the games, all the everything, he believes that is partially his intellectual property and he wants a piece of the pie going forward. Now, to be clear, he does not have the right to any of the sequels or any of the games or anything that was released in the past, but if he does win this case, that means he will get the rights to the franchise, which means that going forward, it's going to be a pretty big payday for him. Now, according to Larry Zerner, who, fun fact, played Shelly during Friday the 13th Part 3, Shelly, the guy who played him, is now a copyright lawyer, by the way. He can't even make this stuff up. He claimed on Twitter that this sort of situation is actually quite common. Victor Miller made his termination claim in 2016, and the termination itself is set to take effect on July 15th of 2018. The reason why it took two years to go along is because normally this stuff is handled between the author and the producer, in this case, Victor Miller and Sean Cunningham. It's usually handled behind the scenes, right? And they decide how they're going to split the money going forward. But instead of doing that, Sean Cunningham decided to sue Victor Miller because he claims Victor has no rights to the franchise whatsoever. Because this legal dispute is still happening, and the termination day is coming up, all Friday the 13th productions are forced to be stopped entirely, including the Friday the 13th game. Now, Gun Media, who are the people who made the Friday the 13th game, they put out a statement recently where they claim that because of the termination day coming up, they are not allowed to release any more content for the game whatsoever because they may not have the right to anymore. This means they can't release the Uber Jason that was scheduled to come out soon. This means they can't release the Grendel map that they've been working on. This means they they can't give us any more counselors or any more skins or kill packs or emote packs or anything like that. They can't give us anything until this legal dispute is resolved and we have no idea when that is going to be. Like I said, this dispute has been going on for two years now and there really doesn't appear to be an end in sight. This means it could go on for years to come and while all this is happening, we can't get any more content for this game and more importantly, we can't get any more content related to the Friday the 13th franchise whatsoever, which 
means no movies, no graphic novels, no comic books, no video games, no anything. For all intents and purposes, Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees, and Camp Crystal Lake are all in limbo right now, and it may be a very long time before anything new comes from the franchise. Now, I have seen a lot of people being very doom and gloom about this news, but it's important to remember that this does not mean that the franchise is dead. The reason why there is a dispute in the first place is because of how much money there is to be made with such an iconic brand. Regardless of how the lawsuit plays out, I fully expect them to allow Friday the 13th the game to continue playing out content because it makes them money. They are licensing their brand to Gun Media, therefore they get a little bit off the top, right? So I expect them to allow more content to come to the game eventually. I expect more movies to come out eventually, especially if the new Halloween reboot blows up this October, which by the way, super hyped about that. It's really not so much a matter of if we're going to get new content eventually, it's a matter of when we are going to get new content eventually, because once again, we can't get anything until this legal dispute is resolved. My personal take on this entire situation is I hope that the rightful owner gets their money, right? If Victor Miller is entitled to more than what he received back in the day, which if he only got $9,500, I think he's entitled to a little bit more than that. But regardless, if he's entitled to it, I hope he gets his money. If he's not entitled to it, then I hope this case is resolved sooner rather than later, because the last thing I would like to see is us not getting a Friday the 13th movie for another decade. And I would also hate to see this game die because Gun Media is isn't allowed to release any new content. While this lawsuit is active, there's only a handful of things they are actually allowed to do. Like I said, they can't give us new Jasons or new maps or new counselors or really anything fun whatsoever. The only thing they are allowed to do, and they discussed this in a recent announcement, is they are only allowed to do bug fixes, make balance changes, and apparently they are going to be adding dedicated servers to the console versions of the game. Right now, that's all Gun Media has planned for the foreseeable future of Friday the 13th the game. Now, while all all that sounds well and good, I think there is a lot more they could be doing to capitalize on this entire situation. Not the game is getting a lot of mainstream press because of this big lawsuit. Don't get me wrong, I think the game is really fun. I love Friday the 13th, but there is definitely a lot they could be doing to make the game better and encourage people to not only buy it, but continue playing it over a long period of time and buy what DLC is already available. I have several suggestions I personally think would make this game better, and since I've been wanting to discuss these for a very long time, I feel as though now is like the best time to possibly do this. For starters, they need to revamp the entire leveling system. Right now, this game's leveling system is really incomplete, it's really slow, and it's really grindy. To give you guys context, I have between 65 and 70 hours in this game's multiplayer. I only really started playing it seriously over the course of the past couple of months, and even though I have like 70 hours in this game's multiplayer, I'm level 44. Right? Leveling up in this game gives you different Jasons, it gives you different counselors. At super high levels, you get special kills, you get bloodier skins of Jasons, you even get the ability to change Jason's weapon. But the problem is, it takes for freaking ever to get there, right? The average player is going to get bored of this because they don't feel rewarded. A key part of game design is keeping your players engaged and making them feel like they're actually earning things. They actually feel rewarded for their time. If this is done correctly, people will spend more time with the game, they'll spend more money on the game because now they're playing it a bunch more they're more open to buying dlc for it and they're also more likely to recommend the game to their friends and try to get them playing with them which helps start the entire process over again i feel like gun media needs to redesign the leveling system to make it much faster and also give fans a more steady stream of unlocks and a more steady stream of content again they can't add more content to the game but they can shuffle around the content that's already in there to make it feel more rewarding they can do this by giving us more base experience for completing objectives they can update the badge system to actually give us experience, which for those that don't know, there are badges in this game, which basically serve as challenges, right? Like every other game has. But for some reason, these badges don't actually give you experience. Like what's the point of even having them if they don't give us experience? They could give us more double XP events. They could have more events in general. They could also decide to lower the requirements for certain rewards. Right now, if you want the ability to swap your weapon on your Jason, like hypothetically take... Jason part six, and instead of having his big spear, you could swap it out for a machete or maybe an axe. If you want to do that, you have to be level 113. Like I said, I have 70 hours played, which is much more, I would say, than like an average player, and I'm level 44. <laughs> Right, there's a big difference there. Now, obviously, I'm not the best player in the world. You guys are seeing that from the gameplay, but I understand the game. I play well enough. I escape a good percentage of the time, and when I'm Jason, 
I usually kill off everybody, or at the very least, I'll get most of the people with maybe a couple people getting away. But even then, it still takes me ages to level up, and I don't ever see myself getting to level 113, because that is way too grindy for a player like myself. Currently, the best way to get experience in this game is to play offline matches on a small map against bots over and over and over, and to me, that isn't really fun. Like, I feel like you should be rewarded for actually playing the game online and playing against other people and working together as a team and trying to escape Jason or trying to take out all the counselors instead of just grinding offline all the time, right? I feel like you should be rewarded within a reasonable amount of time, and I don't think 10 days of playtime to be able to swap weapons is what most people would consider reasonable. So my first suggestion, revamp the entire leveling system. My second suggestion, and this one's kind of obvious, is to continue with bug fixes, but do them at a much faster rate. Right now, the game runs well most of the time, but there are still a lot of bugs that have been plaguing the game for months and months now, right? Just this afternoon, while playing to record footage for this video, I had three straight matches where I spawned in as a different counselor than the one I selected, right? That's been happening forever now. There are also issues with rubber banding, issues getting in and out of vehicles, spectating issues, issues where Jason's grab just does not work. That is so infuriating. You go to grab somebody, you just whiff the air next to them, they get away from you as a result. Lots of little issues like that, right? I understand that Gun Media is a small indie team, and they take pride in that, and I take pride in playing their game. I take pride that they are fans of the franchise, and they made a game by fans for fans, but all these little bugs, when they pile on, can really make the game not feel fun, and I think smoothing them out would do wonders for Friday the 13th going forward. My third and final suggestion for this video, which by the way, I could keep going on. There are plenty of suggestions I have, but I feel as though this one is the most important. I think they should give Jason a small buff. And I know that idea might be controversial, but like it or not, the biggest selling point for this game is the ability to play as Jason Voorhees. And as it sits right now, I think it's too easy for Jason to end up being the victim as compared to being the unstoppable killer that everybody should be afraid of. The player base in Friday the 13th may be small, but what few players we do have, they are very dedicated. And a lot of them have mastered the art of being able to bully Jason. As you guys can see from this footage, this Jason is pretty new to the game, and he's just being stunlocked for minutes on end. The police are there, these guys could escape, but instead they're just beating up on poor Jason here, which is really no fun for anybody. Those of us like myself who already escaped, it's no fun to have to spectate this. Like, we're only still here because we want the experience for finishing the match, and these guys are just wasting time for no reason. It's no fun for the Jason whatsoever, and when people see this kind of thing, I think it turns them off from not only playing the game, but buying the game in general. General, because you see Jason, who's this guy you want to play as, and you see how weak he is in the grand scheme of things, it kind of defeats the entire purpose of the big unstoppable killer, right? So that's why I have two suggestions to fix this situation. Number one, spawn less baseball bats on every map. For those that don't know, the baseball bat has a 100% chance to stun Jason, regardless of what counselor you're playing, right? And if there were less of them out there, Jason would have a more fighting chance, and it would also allow gun media to buff up other weapons so we may have some more variety when it comes to our weapon choices. My second suggestion, and I feel as though this is the most important one, if I could add just one thing to the game, this would be it. I feel like they should update Jason's rage ability to make it so it protects him against melee stuns. How rage works in the game right now is once you get it, Jason can walk through doors instantly, he can walk through walls instantly, people can't really hide from him anymore. It's a pretty cool ability, but the thing is, it does nothing to protect him from the counselors themselves, right? How you get Rage is it automatically activates 15 minutes into the match, but it charges faster whenever Jason takes damage. Even with that faster charging mechanic, it still takes a very long time for Jason to enter Rage mode. Therefore, it's not that big of a deal, especially if everybody's smart and are trying to escape relatively quickly. If it does activate early in the match, which is pretty rare, it's usually because Jason's getting stun locked by a Chad or a Jenny using a baseball bat, or maybe Tommy Jarvis stunning him a bunch of times, right? Which is definitely a very bad thing. If Rage is active, I feel as though melee weapons should require two stuns to take Jason down as compared to just one. That would make it so Jason's more of a threat once he's enraged, not all the time, but once he's enraged, and it would also just make him scary again, right? Now, of course, I do think that shotguns and flare guns should always be a one-shot stun, regardless of whether or not Jason's enraged, but I feel like once he has his Rage ability, he should have some protection to melee stuns. If they were to give him that, I feel like people would focus less on trying 
the fight, Jason, and they would focus more on trying to fix the car, or call the police, or fix the boat, or try to actually escape by conventional means. Now, of course, people will still be able to stun Jason with melee weapons with proper play and proper combat, especially when they're in the group, but it's not going to be as easy as it was previously, and if they were to do that, that'd probably be a good thing for the game all around. So, those are just a couple of my suggestions. I'd love to hear what you guys think down there in the comment section below, and I truly hope that they do make some changes to the game in the very near future, because according to Steam Spy, the peak concurrent player count for Friday the 13th yesterday was 629 players. That means at most, like at one time, the maximum amount of people on the game at one time yesterday was 629, which is not terrible, but it's also not a sign of a thriving game, and with them now not being able to release any new content whatsoever for the foreseeable future, I'm worried that the player count might drop lower and lower. That's why it's crucial that Gun Media not only works really hard to keep fans interested during the lawsuit, but it's also crucial that they keep developing Uber Jason. They start working on other Jasons, like maybe the one from the reboot or something like that. It's important they keep working on the Grendel map and a couple of other maps. It's important they keep working to make a bunch of new content for if and when they are allowed to ever update this game again. Because if they are allowed to update it again, they should have a big patch ready to go the day they are allowed to, and that would be a very good thing for fans all around. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section below, and I will be doing my best to keep you guys up to date with more information as this lawsuit develops. But until then, that's all I have for you guys here today. Once again, hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a rating, and I hope you guys all... Have a wonderful day.